Hi, I'm Robert. I come to you as an automobile enthusiast that has maintained, serviced, and repaired my own vehicles in excess of 30 years. I currently drive a car with over 230,000 miles on it, and I once had a car that had over 400,000 miles on it and ran very well. While you're watching the video, please watch a step or two ahead. Sometime the current step is better explained in the next step or two. Also, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you benefit from the information. In this video, I'm going to walk you through some no start conditions. So, if you would, please like it, mark this as a favorite, or bookmark it some kind of way because you may want to share this with someone in the future. Someone that will have a no start condition they'll need some help with. First thing that you have to decide is do I have a cranking or a no cranking condition? Those are the two things that you want to figure out. Now, when you're dealing with a car that won't start, you're probably not going to be able to get it started, but you do need to figure out why it's not starting so you can relay that information to someone else that may come and help you. So, figure out if it's cranking or it's not cranking. That's the proper term. Okay, if a car is cranking or not cranking, it's very simple to determine. Cranking means that when you turn the key, the motor is turning over, but it's not starting. Not cranking means when you turn the key, you either hear a click or you hear nothing. That means that the car is not cranking. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn the key on this car and determine if it's cranking or if it's not cranking. Okay, on this example, the car is cranking. Let's assume that the car is not cranking and go from there. There's only going to be a couple things that's wrong. Okay, if a car is not cranking, you have one or two problems. Number one, you have a dead or weak battery. Number two, you have a bad or dead starter. Now, if the battery is weak, what may happen is you may turn the key, the lights may come on, and when you try to start it, it may not start. So, let's look at that. Okay, I turned the key on. Run. I didn't try to start it. You see all the lights. I try to start it. The lights stay on or they go weak. If I hear a click, that means the starter tried to engage. If I don't hear no click, the battery is probably so weak that it didn't even try to engage the starter. Now if you're dealing with a car that won't crank, that's probably the best scenario. Because if the car is not cranking, you probably have a bad, a bad battery and that's the best scenario. So what you want to do, you can get a cheap, inexpensive meter like this. You turn it to where you would check battery voltage. You could ask someone or figure out how to do that yourself by reading the instructions. You take one of these, you tuck it on the positive battery cable, the red one, then you take the other one and place it on the negative battery cable and you see if you have voltage. When I take it off the negative, you see no voltage. When I put it on, you see voltage. Now it's right at the base of that red line, so this battery may be a little weak. So figure out how to read that and make sure you have at least, uh, most cars will need at least 11 volts to start. Now, let's go on to see if uh, you have good battery volts. Now if your battery volts are, appear to be good, you might want to have somebody help you and you check the battery bolts when you try to crank it because they may drop down dramatically as soon as you try to crank it. The other thing you could do is make sure that good battery volts is getting to the starter and see if the starter is locked up or not working. If you hear a click when you try to start it, then it may be getting voltage to the starter but not enough to crank it. So let's see if I can show you how to check the volts at the starter. Now on the Volvo 
850 and S70s, some of the V70s, most of them, it's got that I-5 where the motor is straight across. You can see the starter down through there. So what I want to do is I want to put my tester on that starter down there to see if it's getting good voltage down there at the starter. Okay, I have the ground cable for the tester grounded out on the frame of the body of the car. I got my meter set to read battery voltage. Now I'm going to take my positive one down to the positive on the starter. And when I hit that, I come up here and look at my gauge. It looks like I have good battery voltage going to it. Now the only other thing is, since this is directly connected to the battery, I know I got the direct battery juice that I had at the battery. So now I need to test the other wire on the starter and if you see down there that other wire on the starter has a little green wire going to it now if you put your cable your positive cable on that green wire and somebody turns the key to the start position you should get power to that green wire so if I put my tester on it now I won't get anything if somebody turns the key on and tries to start the car it should get uh, power to it momentarily while they hold the key. Now, another thing you could do is hold your positive red line on the big bolt that has the battery juice and tell someone to try to start it and watch the voltmeter and see if the voltage drops dramatically when they try to start the car. That'll let you know the battery's too weak and you need to get a battery. Now, if you get voltage to that green wire when somebody turns that key on and that voltage is good that means your starter is likely bad so you're going to have to have somebody help you with that but that's how you test the starter okay just one quick time just to be clear if you do not have cranking so the car is not cranking you either got a battery problem or more than likely a starter problem and that's how you test to make sure if your battery is strong enough and your starter is getting the right signals. So if it's anything other than that, uh, you could have several other problems. But those are your two main likely problems if you have no cranking. Okay, now let's move on to the more complex side. And that is if the car is cranking but it's not starting and running. Now a car needs five basic things to start and run. Number one, it needs air. Number two, it needs spark. Number three, it needs fuel. Number four, it needs uh, compression. And number five, it needs timing. So I'm gonna cover those in that order and try to determine which one of those things you have a problem with. So I'm gonna link uh, examples of how to check those things on this video so if you want to go in depth and checking, click on the links and I'll just walk you through talking about how to do it on this video. Okay, the first thing is air, which is pretty much a given. The only way a car would have problems getting air to start is if you got some massive manifold leak or somebody's done some work that messed something up that it's not getting the correct amount of air. But if it all of a sudden stopped running, and air is an issue, you probably have a bad mass airflow sensor that runs along your air box, right behind your filter normally. And if you have a problem with that, you normally have a check engine light code. So, trying to never drive around with check engine lights, because when new codes pop up, it doesn't flash a different color, letting you know you got a new code. So, you might want to get your engine scanned, to see if you got a, a code for a bad mass airflow sensor. But if you disconnect the battery or the battery goes dead, it will erase those codes. So don't let those codes get erased and check it to see if you have a mass airflow sensor problem. Okay, the number two issue that I mentioned is spark. So if something's wrong with the car and it's not getting spark, it won't start. So you have to check that. In order to check it, 
you have to pull a spark plug and put the spark plug close to something that has metal like a part of the motor or ground or something like that and have somebody crank it while that spark plug is very close to the motor uh, to that ground or whatever you put it close to if it's sparking you see little ticks of spark every few seconds you know you have spark if it's not sparking you know you have a problem with the car getting spark so if you want to learn how to check spark better go ahead and click this link but you have to make sure the car is getting spark if it's not getting spark it's either got a bad uh, distributor it's got a bad coil it could have a bad cam sensor it could have a bad crank sensor but you need to know if the car is getting spark okay number three you have to make sure that the car has fuel or fuel pressure. To do that, you might want to listen to see if you can hear the fuel pump turn on whenever you go to start the car. Now, on my car, when I turn the key to on, the fuel pump primes the system to pressurize the fuel injectors and stuff. So when I turn the key on, I can hear the fuel pump hum for about two or three seconds. Also, when I'm trying to start the car, it's too noisy, but the fuel pump's running again. And when I let the key go, if the car does not start, I can hear that fuel pump run for two or three more seconds, and then it'll shut off. So, you got to check for fuel pressure. On this car, one way I could check, the fuel line comes in here, the fuel rail goes across, and here I have a little gauge a little Schrader valve at the end of my fuel rail. I could push in the end of that Schrader valve and see if fuel comes out. Normally I'll need to do that with a little screwdriver or something and that'll tell me if I got fuel pressure. But when the car has been sitting a little while the fuel pressure bleeds off on this one. So check to see if you can hear the fuel pump and check to see if you got fuel pressure. Let's see if we can hear the fuel pump. Okay I'm in the car I got the seat belt fastened. I'm trying to make it as quiet as possible. I'm going to turn the car on and see if you hear the fuel pump turn on for a couple of seconds. I don't know if you heard it, but I heard the fuel pump come on for about four or five seconds. Let me try that one more time. I'm going to put the phone closer to the fuel tank so you can try to hear it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and hit the starter, and you should hear it after the car tries to start. It, the fuel pump ran about four or five seconds, so I'm going to go out and see if there's any fuel in the end of that Schrader valve. Okay, I tried to start the car. It didn't start. I'm going to push in this Schrader valve. And as you can see, fuel came out of the end of the Schrader valve. That's probably an indication that I got some uh, fuel pressure. And you can link to the video on how to check the fuel pump and jump the fuel pump relay. Uh, that test that I did before. Okay, number four is timing. Now, there's two different ways you could check for timing on these Volvos. Other cars may be a little more difficult, but on Volvos it's kind of easy, but it may be this easy for other cars. Now, if you take open the oil cap, because this is an overhead cam car, you got two cams, one here and one here. If you look down in the hole, you can actually see the cam. If you look in there, you can see the metal thing that goes across and some shiny parts. If somebody goes in the car right now and tries to crank the car up, that cam will be turning. That lets me know that the timing belt is turning the cams. If that's not turning, there's a good chance that the timing belt's broke. Another thing you could do on these Volvos or any other car is take the timing belt cover off. Down under here, about 8 inches, is a bolt 
on the front of the timing belt cover. Can't quite see it here, but it's like a 10 millimeter bolt. You can reach your hand down there and fill it. You take that bolt out and you open up this cover. I think I have a video that I linked to, but you get the cover off where you can see the belt. If the belt looks loose or broken or there's a roller in there that's damaged, you don't have timing. So if you don't have timing, the car won't start because it needs timing to crank up and be in rhythm. Also, if you got a crank sensor or your cam sensor, it'll detect if you have a timing problem and it won't let the motor start if it thinks the timing is off. So if you got a broken timing belt, your car won't start. Okay, for the sake of this video, last but not least, you need to check compression. If for some reason you don't have compression, either you have a blown head gasket or your timing belt jumped and busted some valves or you got a burnt valve or your car threw a rod, anything along those lines, it will affect compression. Normally, if you have compression bad in one cylinder, the car will still start. So if you have a burnt valve, the car normally starts, but it runs real rough. If you have a thrown rod or something, the car will probably start. It will just run real rough because the other four or, or three or however many cylinders you have will be running fine. Now, if you got a four-cylinder car and one of them's bad, it may not run. But five or more, it'll likely run with one bad cylinder. But if your car is not starting, you're going to need to do a compression test. And here's a link to a quick compression test video. So, there you have it. If you have a no start, those are your five likely culprits. Now, if you have a problem that you have all these elements in place and the car is still not starting, you have another issue that you have to dig into. So there you have it. The basic things to check if your car is not starting. If it's not cranking, you likely have a battery or starter problem. If it is cranking, but it's not kicking over or firing or running, you probably have one of those five basic things going bad. Now, if it's cranking and you check those five basic things, one of those things will lead you to the actual problem. Whether it's ignition coil or bad compression or no fuel pressure, that'll lead you down that road. And I, I, you don't, you know, there's no time in a video to take you down all those scenarios, but that'll lead you to know if you got a bad fuel system, bad ignition system, or bad mechanical system when it comes to timing and compression. If you got any questions, go ahead and post them. If you feel that this information was beneficial, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can also subscribe to my channel so that you can get notification of future videos that I post. Visit my channel. I have all types of do-it-yourself videos there. You can leave questions here, and I'll try to respond to them as quick as possible. You can also visit my website at robertspinner.com. Thanks again for watching.